Now we will look into our first use case of adding a virtual chassis in building 3 and then we'll look at some of the other configuration options available under build mode. So as you can see I'm at the top of the window under the build mode and I will be using discover devices option to discover a virtual chassis. I can discover a device by lot of different ways either using IP, a range of IPs, subnet or a host name. So the IP address of my building 3 virtual chassis is 1094.191.149. This is the console of the master device and this is my VME0 IP address. Again, it's 1094.191.149. Let me go back. Uh, okay, let me add the device credentials. So I'll add the username and the password. Okay. And I wanted to show that for the Greenfield, Greenfield network, I can directly import the list of IP addresses, username, passwords from a CSV file and add all the devices within the network director with just with the import options. So right now since we ha only have one device or a virtual chassis I gave the IP address and the credentials and I'll just go ahead and select next. So I can either discover right now or I can do a discovery at a later time for now. Just go ahead and do run now. We have the IP, the password and schedule discoveries right now. Just say finish. So as you can see that the discovery job has been submitted and if I click the show detail options shows that the discovery is succeeded. So once the discovery is completed, you can see that this was the job that we had submitted and the device is managed, shows the version, the platform, this is the host name and the IP address. So once it is being discovered, it will be added as part of the unassigned platforms under switching network. So if I expand that, I should be able to see a building 3 virtual chassis. So this is the virtual chassis we just added into network director. See the IP address and all the members. So this is how you add a virtual chassis or any other device, EX or a wireless device in network director using discover devices option. Now as I just said, the device or the virtual chassis is listed as part of unassigned. If I want to assign it to any of these core, ag or access layer, I would go to the build mode and I would select assign devices to logical category. And I need to select the building 3 VC, so I would select this. and then I would go to assign devices to logical category and then let's say we move it to the aggregation layer. So I would say new role aggregation and done. So as you can see now building 3 VC is listed as part of the aggregation layer under my switching network. 
under device management then there are various other options like again if you want to change the location of a device what we did just was the on the logical view changing location of a device will allow me to change the location from let's say from building 1 to building 2 or building 3 so here I can move that virtual chassis into any of the locations so that's where the location view was about then I can directly SSH into a particular device delete those devices or if you want to re reboot the devices remotely you can just do that by the reboot devices options and then configuring a lag or looking at the configuration all that can be done using any of these options now let's take a look at the configuration templates uh, for this example we'll just use let's say the commonly used feature would be configuring a VLAN so I would click on the VLAN and these are the VLANs which are configured across my all the different devices within my network so I have an option to either directly use one of the pre-configured template and then assign it to the device or I could build one new VLAN for this particular virtual chassis so once I click on add options it will ask me whether I want to configure it on an EX or a wireless device I would select switching or EX say OK I would give a name let's say building 3 management VLAN name B3 MGT1 and let's say the VLAN ID is 1000 click next here now there are some additional parameters if user want to configure MAC limit layer 2 or layer 3 filters or the additional VLAN security settings like DSCP snooping or ARP inspection so all those are those can be configured right here let's say keep it default and I would select next and finish so this is the building 3 MGT VLAN I have just added as you can see that the VLAN got added but it's in unassigned state so I would have to go and assign it and here as I was telling before I have an option to assign if it's like a management VLAN which is common so I have an option to assign it to my entire network I will or I could go down to a specific device and select that device for assignment and here again in that device I have an option to assign to a particular device or assign to a specific port so let's say assign it to a device for now and I would say click next and finish so as you can see that this building 3 management VLAN that is VLAN 3 I mean VLAN 1000 is pending deployment so I got it assigned but I haven't yet deployed the configuration and if we go back to the console we can quickly verify that 
So I would do run show VLAN. As you can see that right now I have the default and VLAN 10 configured on this device. Once I deploy this VLAN, I should be able to see VLAN 1000 as part of my configuration. Now let's go to the go and deploy this VLAN. So for deploying a particular configuration, we have to go to the deploy mode, which is right here, the next to the build mode. So I would click to deploy, would take me to the deploy mode. So this is the deploy mode and <coughs> in deploy mode, you can see that it shows the building 3 VC, that's our host name and there is some configuration that needs to be deployed. So we can look at that, we can deploy it right away, we can schedule a deploy for a later time during maintenance window. We can look at the pending configuration changes. So I would say view pending config changes and it would generate that config. So this is the XML view and if I click the CLI view it will show that I'm trying to configure VLAN B3 management 1 with the VLAN ID 1000. I can also validate the config changes before deploying making sure there is no error. Says that no validation warning so configuration looks fine. So let's select that and I would say deploy now. So right now the config deployment is going on. And you can see here that network director has pushed the config to the device and right now my run show VLAN shows B3 MGT with the VLAN tag of 1000. So that's how we have configured a VLAN and we have deployed it on the device itself. So that concludes the configuration of a VLAN. We'll look at some other configs related to the wireless now. Now let's go back to the build mode and create a mobility domain for building 3. So I'm right now in the build mode from switching network I'm going to the top of the hierarchy at my network level and now you can see that the task pane has given me additional option of domain management and here I have a controller WLC ND01 which I would like to be part of a mobility domain. So for that I would go ahead and select create mobility domain option. Let's specify a name as ABC building 3 and then primary seed would be my WLC ND01. Select OK. I only have one controller for right now so I'm not adding any secondary seed which I should be but for now for the demo purpose just look at the primary seed and then I would just say done. So as you could see that ABC building 3 mobility domain got created and then this is the controller WLC ND01 which is part of this mobility domain. So this is how using domain management create mobility domain option we have created a domain and added a controller as part of the domain. Now I will quickly show some of the other configurations I will not get into the details of those but just to give you overview of let's say 
how to configure cost. If I select cost, we have the Juniper predefined cost template that you can use. So I would select that and just to show you the details, you could do that or you could probably, if you want to edit, you could just use the predefined and edit the rewrite rules and the queues and some of the other class of service configurations right using the cost template you can configure your wireless LAN service and like any configuration related to SSID can be done over here and then you have an options to configure your radio profile access authorization and authentication as part of this AAA option your layer 2 or layer 3 filters can be configured as part of the filtering options and your port level configurations like access or trunk can be configured under the port option Like port family, advanced settings, port security for that specific port can be configured over here. So that was all about the various profile based configuration options under build mode and from now after the build mode the next demo will look at the use case of deploying as part of the deploy mode.